Here we're asked to write and solve an equation to solve the problem. Marta just started a new job as an engineer. She's given $9,000, a $9,000 sign-on bonus, that's great, and paid $4,500 per month. Write and solve an equation to determine the number of months that Marta must work before she earns $27,000. So there's the sign-on bonus of $9,000 that we want to write down first. And then on top of that, she earns $4,500 for every month that she works. So I'm going to write X for that one. So depending on the number of months, which is X here, um, you multiply that with $4,500 to get how much money she earned for those months. Um, and we want to know uh, how many months does she have to work before she earns a grand total of $27,000. So this is our equation here. And for us to figure out the number of months, let's go ahead and solve this. We need to, first of all, get rid of this guy here to get to x equals. That's our goal, the number of months, by the way. So I'm going to subtract 9,000 from both sides. If we do that, we get to 4,500. x is equal to, what is that, 18? 18, 18,000. Um, okay, and then once we do that, we divide both sides by... Uh, 4,500, I'm going to punch that into the calculator real quick. We should get x equals 4. So Marta must work 4 months before she earns $27,000. Tyler can type 50 words per minute. He needs to finish typing his 500-word essay and, has already, and already has 25 words typed. Uh, write and solve an equation to determine the number of minutes m that will take Tyler to finish writing his essay. So... Tyler can write 50 words per minute. So for every minute, you multiply it by 50 to get how many words he typed. And he has already typed 25 words. So we're going to put 25 as the constant there. And we want to know how long will it take, how many more minutes will it take for him to write uh, 500 words. So again, let's go ahead and solve this equation. We need to get rid of this guy first. So I'm going to subtract 25 from both sides. When I do that, I get to 50m is equal to 475. I'm going to divide both sides by 50 to get to m equals. And um, my calculator math tells me that I should be at 9 and a half minutes. Okay, so question number one on this page, we have to solve for the variable here, um, and number five is done for you. Not really, but okay. Um, question number one, uh, we're going to solve for the variable x, so assuming that your equation solving skills are up to date, if not, this is where you would probably need your teacher, but if you're checking your answer along with me, here we go. We need to do the distributive property first. So, 2 times x is 2x, 2 times 5 is 10, so I'm going to write 10 there, equals 16. And again, our whole goal is to get to x equals, so let's slowly peel away the layers of this onion. We need to get rid of this guy first. Subtract 10 from both sides, I'm left with 2x is equal to 6. And then I want to divide both sides by the coefficient of 2, I get x equals 3. Okay, question number 2, distributed property, or the same. 3 times 5 is 15 plus 3m, because 3 times m is 3m, equals negative 18. Let's get rid of the 15 first, because it's, well, it's hanging out by itself over there. So I'm going to subtract 15 to make 0. This goes away. I'm left to 3m is equal to negative 30. I'm going to divide both sides by 3. I'm left with m equals negative 10. All right, question number 3. I'm going gonna, gonna to distribute this to you, like going this way, because I don't have any room up on top. Negative 2 times 3y equals negative 6y. And negative 2 times negative 5, since the signs are the same, it's going to equal 10. Positive 10, that is. Equals 14. Let's get rid of this first. Uh, that way, we're left with negative 6y is equal to, what is that, 4? Okay. Um, we're going to get a fraction here, but divide by 6, or negative 6, that is. And we're left with y equals negative 4 over 6, but simplified is negative two-thirds. Okay, question number four. Um, 
There you go. So, uh, we're going to distribute that 4 to both terms there. We got 12t minus 8 equals 88. Let's get rid of this guy first. By adding 8 to both sides, we should get 12t is equal to 96. Divide both sides by 12. We should get t equals, what is that, 8? For question number 4. Okay, question number 5. Okay, people see fractions and they freak out. Don't freak out here. But um, in this question, we got we got to get rid of this fraction first. And the way we do that is we need to multiply by the reciprocal, which is four thirds, to both sides. By the way, when we do that, this gets rid of that there. I mean, it doesn't really get rid of it. It just kind of simplifies the problem for us a little bit. Um, so 8b minus 4 from inside the parentheses comes out, and we got 15 times 4 thirds. So let's multiply the numerators together. Right? Numerator meaning uh, for the whole number 15 over 1. 15 times 4 is what? 60 up on top there, and then 3 in the denominator, which uh, we can actually... Let, let's, let's actually simplify that. That should be actually... Uh, what should that be? That should be 20, right? So 60 divided by 3 is 20. Okay. So we're going to add 4 to both sides. When we do that, this goes away. We have 8v is equal to 24. And then divide both sides by 8. And we get v equals 3. Okay, more of the same here. Um, except I'm going to... Let me see. Let me change the color here. I'm going to get rid of the 6 that's in the way. Uh, Okay, and then back to blue. Oops, I like this shade of blue. So we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is 4 thirds to get rid of that fraction. 4 thirds. That way that goes away, and I'm left with 4m is equal, oh, sorry, not equal to, minus 12 is equal to 12 over 1 times 4 over 3, which comes out to what? 48 divided by 3. Divided by 3, which we're going to further simplify to 16, because 48 divided by 3 is 16. And if I'm going too fast, again, pause the video. So, because uh, that's what you can do when you're watching a video. So let's go ahead and add 12 to both sides. And when we do that, we're left with 4m is equal to, what is that, 28. And divide both sides by 4, we get m is equal to 7. Then question number 7. A rectangular garden is fenced on all sides with 258 or sorry, 256 feet of fencing. The garden is 8 feet longer than it is wide. Find the length and width of the garden. So we need to find the length and the width. So we need to find two things for this question. So, uh, because it's a rectangle, if that's w plus 8, we know that this is also w plus 8. And if, if this side is w, then this side is also w. So perimeter means if we add all those lengths together, we should get the perimeter of 256 feet. So. Let's go by one by one. So that first side, W, plus that top side, W plus 8, plus that right side, W, plus that bottom side, W plus 8, should all equal 256 feet of fencing. Let's combine, let's combine like terms. These are the like terms here, the Ws. So let's go ahead and combine those. We've got four of those. And then the 8 plus 8 is 16, equals 256. And then we can just solve like normal. Let's see, subtract 16 from both sides. When we do that, that goes away. 4, W is equal to 256 minus 16, what is that? 240, yeah, 240. Divide by 4, divide by 4, we get W equals 60. And then, since we know what W is, the length is uh, 8 more feet than that, so 60 plus 8 is the length, which is 68. Okay, question number eight. Let's review that this this equation, this random equation, 0 0.10 times m plus 1,000 equals 3,000 plus 3,000. Select the appropriate column to identify the reason that would justify each step in solving for m. Okay, so we have that first one. So first thing I do, right, is, is distribute. Um, but they don't do that, right? Um, they actually, it looks like they combine in this step one, they combine these these two terms, uh, 3,000 and 3,000. So that is combining like terms. Okay. The next thing they did is look like is look, looks like they distributed, right? They distributed that that uh, 0 0.10 to both the m and the thousand, and resulted in step two. So I'm going to say distributive property. And then what it looks like they did was they moved this 
100 over to the right hand side by subtracting 100 from both sides therefore we're going to say since they subtracted 100 we're going to say subtraction property of equality and lastly divide both sides by 0 0.10 that is the division property of equality question nine a pool in the shape of a rectangle is a perimeter of 80 feet so if i can draw a pool here around this picture the perimeter is 80 the pool is eight feet less wide than it is long so whatever the length is it's it's eight feet less wide i think i hope i'm writing the right equation here oh we are right so here your friend claims that the solution to the equation is 80 equals 2l plus 2 times l minus 8 and the length of the pool is 16 feet long well let's let's go ahead and check if i were to do this over again or actually no we're not looking for the right answer we're just checking their equation here okay so um we have two sides like the top and the bottom 2l and then we have the two uh, side lengths and all that equals 80 step one we are let me see what we do here is it looks like they're distributing that too it looks like that's what happened there so i'm going to say distribute a property there and then in step two it looks like we got a 4l and the only way they could have gotten 4l is if they combined these two like terms so combining like terms is what i'm going to go with and then lastly to go from step two to step three or not lastly to go from step two to step three it looks like they added 16 to both sides so I'm going to say addition property of equality, and sure enough, there's a choice for that. And then divide both sides by 4 to get 24 equals L. Uh, so since we divide by 4, we're going to say division property of equality for that last one.